Greetings and welcome to the listeners. My name is Chris Dikumana and you're listening to the Kanguka Broadcast. Today is Tuesday and I want to encourage every person who feel like your life is at a standstill. Sometimes you feel like your life has come to a halt and you lose hope. Some of you who are listening to me are filled with tears. You cry yourself to sleep every night. You feel like your life is useless. There is a listener who has all the material things. You have money. You have nice things. Everyone thinks that you are doing great. But you cry every night because you are missing something in your life and you are suffering. But let me tell you that I am knows you and he loves you. If you're listening to me and you feel like you have no future, I want you to put your trust in I am the God who created you. I want you to have the same spirit as David who said in Psalm 23 verse 4, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I really love this verse because it's very encouraging. It talks about going through the valley of the shadow of death. Not the valley of death, but the valley of the shadow of death. It means that you are going through a situation that looks like death and it feels like your life has stopped. It feels like you have no future. Everything is at a standstill. It looks like your prayers aren't heard. But let me tell you that Satan is lying to you. I want you to listen to the words of this verse. It's telling you that if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then I am is with you. You need to be like David. He didn't believe that God is with him only when things are going well. You need to remember that God is with you even when you're going through hard times in the valley of the shadow of death. Even when it feels like there's no hope and you have no future, you need to remember that I am is with you. So why does David say that I am is with him? It's because David is encouraged by God's rod and staff as it's written in verse 4. He's encouraged because he knows that no matter how bad the situation may look, it doesn't mean that there is no God in heaven. It doesn't mean that God has abandoned him. We often feel like God has turned his back on us, but if you feel this way, I want you to know that Satan is lying to you. Let me tell you that I am is full of love. He has so much love for you that he can never abandon you. The word of God says that he gave us the most precious thing he has, and that's Jesus Christ. He didn't give Jesus Christ for the sake of some people only, but he gave him for the sake of the whole world. He gave Jesus so that whoever believes in him can become a child of God. So if God gave his son, if he gave the most precious thing he has, then how can you believe that he has abandoned you or that he has turned his back on you? I want you to understand that when you hear silence from God, it doesn't mean that he has abandoned you. It doesn't mean that he is not speaking. God speaks even if you can't hear him. He is closer to you than you think. Maybe you have an incurable disease and you've been praying for healing for a while. Maybe you are barren and you're praying for a child. Or you've been praying for marriage for a while but you're still single. You feel like all the people have abandoned you. But let me tell you that when you feel abandoned, I am draws closer to you than in the good times. I am is very near to those who are broken hearted. He cares deeply about those who have been abandoned. If you've been abandoned, you need to know that I am is very near to you. So be encouraged by this verse and don't believe in the lies of Satan because he wants to convince you that your God has abandoned you. But God can never abandon you. Jesus loves you. I want to encourage you don't stop praying. Many children of God stop praying when they are going through hard times and that's a huge mistake. You need to pray. You need to pour out your heart to God. You need to praise him no matter how bad your situation may be. Don't wait until you have an answer before you praise God. You need to praise him in every situation. You need to open your mouth and confess his name. If you have a burden, don't be afraid to tell him about it because he's your father and he can hear you wherever you are. So if you are losing hope, you need to stop complaining. You need to stop saying words of despair. You should just say, God, it doesn't matter how bad the situation is. I trust in you. I know that you are holding my hand. You just need to say one word and my problems will be solved. So you need to change the way you speak. Sing a song to 
to God. If you are unable to speak your own words, look for a song of praise to God and sing. Declare the love of God and sing about the power of God. Your praise will trigger an angelic response because praise attracts the glory and power of God. So you need to stop complaining. You need to stop losing hope. Stop believing that you are on your own. Even if you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you need to know that I am is with you and no matter how bad your situation is, it won't remain the same. No matter how long and dark the night is, the sun will eventually rise up. I am will make a way for you. He knows you. He loves you. He has great plans for you. So rise up and praise God. Stop complaining because there is God in heaven. Now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Yesterday, I was showing you that Paul was explaining the new identity we have in Christ. You may not understand this passage very well, but in Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 to 5, Paul is explaining that when a Nea is still a child, he has no authority. For instance, the son of a king may be the designated heir and one day he will replace his father. But as long as he is still a child, he has no power. He will have a tutor who raises him and teaches him everything he needs to know until the day which was appointed by his father. So who is the tutor that Paul is referring to in this figure of speech? Remember that we saw in chapter 3 that the law was our tutor. In chapter 3 we saw that the law was our tutor. I want you to understand that the law was a tutor and it was preparing the people to become heirs. That's why here in chapter 4 verse 2 says that the child is still under a guardian or a tutor and that tutor is the law. It means that the law is preparing him to be a heir. That's why verse 4 says that when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son Jesus Christ who was born of a woman and who was born under the law. It means that when Jesus was born, people were still under the law. That's why many people struggled to understand the things that Jesus was telling them. He would often say you have heard this or that but I'm telling you this. For example he said, you have heard that it was said that you shall not commit a Adultery, but I said to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Or he said, you've heard that it was said a knife for a knife and a tooth for a tooth. But I'm telling you to love your enemies. So people were confused. They had a hard time understanding Jesus because the things he was telling them seemed to be different from what they knew. When Jesus came, the people were still under the law and his mission was to transition them from the law law to faith. So today a righteous man doesn't rely on the law but he lives by faith. This is what I want you to understand. Unless you understand this, you won't be able to understand what Paul is saying. That's why he keeps talking about the contrast between the law and faith. Many people think that the new covenant starts with the gospel of Matthew. But I want you to understand that at the start of the gospel of Matthew, people were still under the old covenant. When Jesus came, people were still under the law. But he took them from the law to faith. Jesus died on the cross and then he rose again. And the new covenant started right after Jesus was raised from the dead. But when Jesus was still on the earth, when he was performing miracles and opening the eyes of the blind and healing lepers and so forth, it was still the old covenant. That's why when the Canaanite woman came to him seeking healing, he refused and he said that it's not good to give the children's bread to the little dogs because he had come only for the children of Israel. At the time when Jesus was performing miracles, only the children of Israel had the right to receive miracles because they were still under the law. But once Jesus rose again, salvation and miracles were extended to all the other nations of the world. We need to understand this because many people wrongly believe that the ministry of Jesus here on earth was done in the new covenant. But that's not true. When he came, it was still during the old covenant. He was born under the old covenant. We can see that the last part of verse 4 says, says that he was born of a woman and he was born under the law. And verse 5 says that he came to redeem those who were under the law. So
So Jesus was born under the law and he can redeem those who were under the law. I want you to understand that to redeem means to pay a price. Jesus paid the price. He didn't pay that price with money, but he paid it with his own blood. He shed his blood so that the people who were under the law could be set free. It's similar to going to a prison where your friend is locked up because he stole money and he received a huge fine that he can't pay. So you pay the fine and they let him go because you paid a price for his freedom. In the same way, Jesus came to pay a price so that those who are bound by the law can be free. He came to set people free from the prison called the law. That was the mission of Jesus. He came to pay a price. He came to redeem us from the law as it's written in verse 5. In other words, he paid a price so we can be free from the law and we can receive eternal life and adoption as children of God. May I am bless you. God willing, we continue tomorrow. I wish you all a great day. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.